Hey there, it's Mia Redrick here, the mom strategist. I have a special guest for you guys today, and she's hi. my lovely daughter. Hey, Alex. Um, say hi to everybody. Hi. We thought that we have time today, and we thought that we could do a pretty cool scope about like mother and daughter real talk, right? And you guys don't move in, Alex. Let me scoot over. Okay. Uh, we're in my office. We're trying to set this up, okay? Um, we thought that it would be really cool for us to do like a mother daughter chat, right? Absolutely. About real talk because um, so often we never have an opportunity. You guys don't have an opportunity to meet meet my family, right? Right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to encourage you to invite your friends. If you have any teenagers, invite your teenagers to come on the scope. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a mother-daughter real talk. Real talk. <laughs> <laughs> real talk, real people. Right? Right. Okay. All right. So I am Mia Redrick. I am Mia. She is my <laughs> twin, right? She. I am Mia, except I need my glasses to see. So I'm Mia Redrick. I am the mom strategist. I support moms mostly with life and business success. Uh, Alex is 14. And for the last, thank you thank so much. You. <laughs> for the last uh, 13 years of Alex's 14 years, I have been an entrepreneur and growing my business in my life. And I think it's so important for moms to know that you can reach for your dreams and still be the kind of mom that you want to be, right? Absolutely. And I thought that this, hey, Hi. Alex, <laughs> I thought that it would be kind of cool to have a conversation with Alex, Sandra, about you know what it feels like to have a mom as an entrepreneur. What does it feel like um, to reach for your dreams as a girl? Like, what does that feel like? So, um, you know, with that, I want to give people time, Alex, to get on the scope. For those of you who are new to the broadcast, I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist. This is my incredible daughter, Alexandra Redrick. And um, what I do is support moms mostly with life and business success. Isn't she great? <laughs> yeah, she's great. Thank you. Uh, she needs her own set of parents, though. She's like kind of a busy girl, right? Wouldn't you say? Okay. Very. All right. Um, I've coached over 400 clients. Isn't her hair great? Thank you. Like she cut her hair, what was it, two years ago? Yeah. Yeah, about two years ago. And Alex said, I am not my hair. And I was like, when I was 13, I think I was my hair. And she's not her hair, okay? Uh, she's a busy girl. She's got a lot going on. And we're going to ask you guys, the teeth. See, we pay for those teeth. <laughs> those teeth. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. There we go. There we go. All right. We pay for those teeth. All right. I, um... I've coached over 400 clients, 112 of them are authors, half of them are number one bestsellers, but I have to say, of all the things I've ever accomplished, one of the best things that Pat and I get to savor are our children. They're incredible gifts. Even We're though you, cool. Yeah, you, you, you guys are pretty, pretty cool, cool, right? Yeah, you're pretty cool, okay? <laughs> and I thought today would be a really great scope to do with Alex, okay, about, you know, just real talk, mom and daughter talk, and if you have any teenagers, invite, wow, what grade are you in, Alex? I'm in eight. She is in eighth grade. Uh, Alexandra is in eighth grade. And so let's just take a minute and maybe quickly introduce you, like Alexandra. How would you describe who you are? Um, well, I'm an actress. I'm a singer. I like to write. I dance when I can. But I don't dance. I sing. I said I sing. See, she doesn't dance. You know, I don't dance. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you dance better than I do. Okay. <laughs> Somewhat. You're an academic? Oh, uh, yes, I am an academic. I love science. Um, when I grow up, I want to be uh, a cardiologist or a card cardiologist. Are you talking surgeon. to them or are you talking to your floor? I don't know. Okay, talk to them. <laughs> a okay. cardiatric surgeon. Okay. Um, I want to go to Johns Hopkins for college. And yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right, so you're, you're a scholar, and you what sports do you play? I play field hockey, softball. I used to swim, and I play volleyball, but I couldn't play this season because I wanted to do glee club. That's right. All right. So in our family, we believe that everybody's brilliant, right? Like in your family, you believe everybody's brilliant. So you everybody gets to show up and do whatever it is that you do. She sounds like you're Olivia, but her name is Alexandra. <laughs> uh, Anitra has an Alexandra and an Olivia, uh -huh. and her daughter runs a confidence conference for girls. Oh, awesome. Yeah, they live in Louisville, Kentucky. Maybe we'll come this year, uh, Anitra, when you tell us the dates. Maybe we'll come. You have to tell us the dates in advance. Would you like to go? Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, we'll go. And that way, Harold can make us a steak. Because we, we're trying to get dinner from Harold. <laughs> That's her husband. He's a great cook, okay? So I thought it would be kind of cool. Alice, move your head over this way so we can see, like, she has a whole head, right? Um, no, it's um, just half. No, it's just, just half, half, right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> August, right? Okay. Um, I thought it would be kind of cool for you guys to meet my family, at least this part of my family, my daughter. All right. And so Alex and I are going to be talking today about what we want to talk about. 
We're going to talk about confidence in girls and how that affects them when they get older and how awesome my mom is. Oh, well, let's talk about how awesome you are, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that when you are a girl, like, sometimes confidence is one of those things that we struggle with. A lot of times in middle school is when it happens, wouldn't you say? I agree full-heartedly. What do you think? Why do you think that happens? It's because it's at the age where it's kind of, it's more, you finally learn that, well, not that's true, but material things start to matter more and physical things start to matter more. Puberty, <laughs> that is correct. Oh. And so, and also boys. Boys, you want to, <laughs> yeah, all of that. <laughs> so, you start to focus more on physical things, so you start to get more insecure because you don't maybe look like Beyonce. But really, who looks like Beyonce? I look Except like, for Beyonce, you look like Beyonce. Right. I, I, and I dance like her. Indeed. Right, like single ladies, right, like that. But but, but more importantly, it what we realize also is that there are unrealistic standards and that I think for our young girls that it's important for them to have role models right inside the house, right? Like all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Yeah, puberty, laughing out loud, that's the boy thing, right? Laughing right. out loud. But I think, how do you overcome that? Because I would say that, of, of of a lot of girls, I think you are an exceptionally confident girl. Like, so how do you show up that way? I, myself, I just, I'm not as fortunate as other girls because I figured out that earlier that it's not as important as you think what other people think of you. I mean, of course it's important because you're going to go to a job interview and they're going to look at you and decide how you are. Now, that's an important important aspect but who you, how you feel inside really does affect how you feel outside because it's going to affect how you talk, how you present yourself, how you dress. Because if you don't feel like anything, you don't show up as anything. So. so, I mean, but, you know, do you think that it's all external? Like, do you think that how you feel is an external process or do you think it starts as an internal? It's definitely an internal thing because if you don't feel good about yourself, there's no way anybody else can feel like you're worth anything because you don't feel like you're worth anything. The first sale is you, okay? So it doesn't matter if you're an adult or if you're a middle schooler. It all starts at the end of the day with inside yourself. Now, see, what Alex and I are talking about, I think it deserves some hearts. Like, what do you think? Like, do you I see so. hearts? I don't see any hearts, right? I am Mia Redrick. This is Alexandra Redrick. She is my daughter. And um, what we're talking about today is just having some real talk on this. <laughs> There's some hearts. That, there well, you we go. got like five hearts, Alex. Like, we have to harden it up for ourselves because, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's so important for other families, other um, teenagers to know and other moms to know that, you know, uh, as Anitra would say, parenting, that works, right? Like, how is it that as a Anitra Durant Allen, if you guys aren't following her, she's one of my clients, and what she does is support moms with, like, brilliant kids, and how do you manage all of that, right? Um, and I thought that today was kind of cool. We just had a really great brunch. It was fabulous. It was fabulous. And it was sort of our kickoff. My husband and I thought, let's do a send-off because the kids go back to school tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so let's do a send-off for the kids, right, and uh, and support them. You guys need to follow Anitra Durant Allen. She's phenomenal. She's phenomenal, okay? Um, and, okay, so we know that. At the end of the day, how you feel about yourself, it all starts inside yourself. So you can dress it up on the outside, but if it's not real on the inside, it doesn't matter. Would you say that's true? That is true. Now, what do you think, Alex, is the number one reason why girls lose their self-esteem? Like, why is it that they don't feel great about who they are? Well, I would say for this generation in particular, it's social media. It all leads down to because there's so much, oh, there's so much of society saying this is what perfect looks like. And if you don't look exactly like this, this means you're ugly or whatever. So girls are like, oh, I don't look like that. I must be ugly. And it's not true. It's not true at all. So is social media real, though? I mean, so, like, all of, like, the people that are, like, tweeting you and all of the text messages and all that, is that, is it real? Um, it depends on where you are in social media because different parts are different. Explain it. There, there are parts of social media which tell you, which help you um, with your self-esteem, which tell you you're beautiful no matter what you look like. Like what? Like, there are pages. There are pages for um, girls who want to be confident that tell you you're beautiful. And there are 
things like that, you know, Instagram pages, Facebook pages, whatever. People send tweets saying, you're gorgeous no matter what you look like. But if you're on the social media, which maybe, I'm not going to target models, but let's just say models, because they tell you this is what beauty looks like, this is what beauty is, this is the definition of beauty, which there isn't one, mm-hmm. so... Okay. So I think that a lot of stuff. Now, how would you say your your your, your home life factors into all of this? I mean, because I think that it's one thing to have on the outside to have people say what's beauty, what beauty looks like. But then I think that it all is for moms, right? I think a lot of it starts from home. Right. Definitely. I've been... Yes. The Dove Girl Self-Esteem Project Pinterest page is a great page. Page And one of the Nutris daughters, is it Olivia or Alex, is a part of the Dove Esteem Self-Esteem Project as well. They, she's, a, she's, she's in partnership with them. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? Okay. So, so what would you suggest about that, Olivia? Yes. Well, I just think I've always been taught to um, love myself and who I am no matter what I look like or how maybe different I might be from other girls. But it's just, it's all about how I feel about myself and that, that everything snowballs from there. So I've always been raised and taught, love yourself, be yourself no matter what, and the rest will follow. The story only starts. You start the story, right? I mean, like, (laughs) at the end of the day, whatever the story is, you started that story. And I think that as moms that we have the, the great opportunity and privilege to understand when we're dealing with our girls and we're molding our girls that their first sense of who they are, or any of our children, begins with how we communicate to them what to value, right, and how to value yourself. And I remember when you cut your hair, right, and Alice decided that she wanted to go natural. She cut her hair, and she cut it really short. It was shorter than this. It was very short. It was like this short, right? It was maybe half an inch. Yeah, and I said to Alice, it was like, and we were playing, you were playing basketball at the time, and I remember being at the basketball game and all the girls having like the long ponytails. You remember that, right? Mm -hmm. And then I said, Alex, you know, how does that make you feel? And she's like, Mom, I am not my hair. And I was like, up top. I'm not. Like, give me five, right? Really? (laughs) Right, because you are not your hair. You're like not this one thing or what anyone wants you to be. You get to decide how you want to show up right. every day, all day. And when you love it, other people love it. Would you say that's true, Alex? Or? Yeah. And also at the same time, what's her name? The African af- um, actress in 12 Years of Sleep. Lapita. I had it before her. I had right. it before Lapita. See? I brought it in. Alex brought in, mm-hmm. what, Alex brought in the natural look before Lapita. Right? Who what? <laughs> Alex told me, you told me that. No, you told me that. Oh, I told you that. I remember that. I was okay. going yes, to right. the that's right. that. that's Alex, right. look at this. You're so pretty. Right. I was like, yes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So Lupita won the Academy Award. What was that? 12 years? Like, What's that? The 12 movie? years of slavery. 12, yeah, okay. So that's really cool, yeah. too. And I think it's important that our girls see in the media, see other girls that look like themselves as well, okay? Right. Now, because not everybody has to look like Tyra Banks or Giselle or whatever. That's right. I mean, although I do kind of look like all of them, like Beyonce, <laughs> yeah. Tyra Banks. Like, yeah. I mean, and I move like all of them. You know, you've never seen me on a runway, but you guys have got to see what I can do. All right. <laughs> Especially an actress. Now, let me ask, yes, Alex is an actress, all right? Mm-hmm. So how do you balance being, you're, you're an academic. She's a straight-A student, okay? Um, you won, you you placed for National History Day last year. You went to, what did you go to, states? I went to states. She yeah. wants to states for National History Day. You're a goalie, a rock star goalie. You're a rock star field hockey, s- field hockey for field hockey. Softball, How do you softball? How do you live in that reality show? We are living it, right? So I know you are too, Anitra. How do you balance being brilliant? Like, how do you not pull back from who you are and look right at this lens right here? Like, because those people are like right here. Okay. Right, right. How do you balance that? Um, when you say balance, you mean, like, keep it all... Keep it all together. Um, I just, I don't know. I mean, it's just natural for me. I just am really good at doing... Because I love everything that I do, whether it's school or Tip one, you gotta love what you do. Or Mm -hmm. it's, um, theater or music. Mm -hmm. I just love everything that I do, so it's not really a task for me. It's more of just, oh, I get to do this. I get to do my homework. I get to be in the play. I get to do a band performance or whatever. Right. What instrument do you play? I play percussion. Yes. I'm a drummer. She's a drummer. All three of the, all three of my children are drummers or so percussionists, right? right. Um, so you know, quiet makes for a quiet house, like mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> nice nice quiet household. And then all three of, all three of you guys sing. 
Yes, yeah. Every all three of you and all three of you act. Yeah. yeah all three of all three of you guys act. We all do sports. And Patrick everybody track, does it. Matthew Patrick ball, track. Me, Patrick was a fencer. Um and you get to take her to all those places and things. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Lucky me, right? That's what I'm saying. Allison needs to own set of parents. Now, here's the coolest thing is, what does it feel like? Because I think that as a mom, a lot of times we think that, I hear this all the time in my work, that, you know, in order for me to make sure my kids got it going on and they're at play practice and they're at, you know, whatever they've got to do, I cannot do what I need to do, right? Now, do you feel like, I mean, because I feel like I get to rock my dreams and you guys get to rock yours. Do you feel that because mommy is pursuing her business and her career that you don't get to do what you need to do? Like in some way I'm taking from you. I mean, do you feel like mom's not there for you? That's definitely not true. Okay. Because part of your business is you get to see, you get to experience things and do things that make you happy. That's part of your brand. You are part of mom strategist you take time for yourself and i know i'm a joy on the stage so that's something for you (laughs) and um no but i don't think everything that you do it's part of things that make you happy because you know in the future it's going to pay off whether you see me on broadway or i'm winning a nobel peace prize for science or whatever everything you do is going to pay off and you know that so it's for you i believe i cannot speak for you though okay yeah well that's true what the question actually was Mm. do you feel (laughs) do you feel in any way that because mommy's pursuing her dreams that i i have not that you haven't gotten what you need i don't i mean do you feel like i mean that's not true i i've gotten more than everything I need. <laughs> I've gotten support. I've gotten the, um, you've done everything that I've asked you to do. And I appreciate that. And oh, good. You, uh, thank yeah. you. Okay. I appreciate it. Now here's the thing, because so many moms believe that it's, it's this or that. Like I hear moms that tell you to me, I can't come to like, I can't come to this event because this person has this this thing going on and in reality what I realize is that it's a story or they think that in some way they're going to impact their kids that their kids aren't going to grow up and do great things if they pursue their own dreams and it's not true because I really try to love you guys I like rock your dreams and and then I rock my own now tell me this how do you yes it's all about balance now Alex tell me what do you think about like you know everything mommy's got going on what how does mom pursuing her dream impact dreams impact you well it's inspiring quite honestly i mean when you think about it me growing up especially as a a female and you're a female also um seeing you get to pursue everything that you want to do that really that affects me that helps my confidence that tells me i don't have to be one thing i can be anything and i understand like if for some reason you miss a play or something because you're in la doing whatever you need to do out there but if i I went to all the plays, and I miss one play, does that make me a bad mom? No, not at all. Okay. Especially if you're doing something that's important as rocking your life. Because I understand that your life's important, too. Maybe I didn't understand that when I was five. But maybe I thought, why aren't you getting me every single Barbie in the world? But Barbie. (laughs) I was a Barbie girl. Um, But definitely at this age, I understand she's rocking her life. Got to do it. Got to do it. Mm-hmm. Especially because we're all older now. Me, Matthew, Patrick, we understand that. That's right. So do you feel like you get to stand on the shoulders of watching someone else? Uh, you definitely got a strong role model. Your achieving greatness is inevitable. <laughs> Alex is awesome, right? Like, I... I cool. <laughs> Did she say she was pretty cool? I'm pretty cool. Yeah, you're pretty cool. And and I and I love you. And I think it's so important to pull back the curtain because a lot of times, you know, what we hear is that people are talking about, you know, life and business success, but you never have an opportunity to experience part of their life. So you don't know if what they're saying is real or not. Now, Alice, what are you looking at? Because the lens is like right know. there, okay, like right here. Just, okay. And if you look there, they can I'm see you. Periscope, okay. Guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> she and the women would be best friends. More than just pretty she's pretty cool right so alex is there any insight that you would give to moms about pursuing their dreams going for their dreams like in terms of because like so to me what i think it's cool for me is that all of alex's friends like i'm their mom right hmm yeah (laughs) I'm like the mom. Like, I, I'm the mom that they're like, they want to talk to. They want me to listen to them sing. They want, they, right? And and why do you think that is? So, like, what do you think it is, right? Well, not only are you awesome, okay. you're just, 
You're just cool to talk to. You're kind of quirky and you're fun, and we're all kind of quirky and fun. Like, in the other day, um, we were in the car, and I had my friend Janai in the car because Mom was driving us home because she's nice. nice. And so... That's right. Um, she... Janai happened to mention that she could sing. Janaya said... for singing. Janaya said she could sing. You know how, like, middle school girls say they sing all the time. All of Alex's friends, they sing in the car. All of them. All of them. Every single one. But Janaya said she could sing. Okay, and I said, well, if you can sing, then sing. And you know what she did? She sang, what song did she sing, Alex? She sang Hello. The Adele sang. song, like Adele, okay? <laughs> and and I was like, wait a minute, let me pull over. Wait, wait, whoa, hold up. Right, and then We she, were parked outside of her house. <laughs> my mom wouldn't let her get out the car. Don't get out the car. Don't get out. <laughs> like, and then, and then I, she was about to go on a cruise, and I told her, I said, you can beat everybody on the cruise if you guys do karaoke. Let's come up with your, your, your lineup of songs, right? Okay. My mom, she told her... <laughs> Get a bow, a big bow. I said, put a big bow in your hair. put it in your hair. And then everybody's going to think, oh, it's a little girl. She got to sing. And then you'll start singing. And they'll be like, whoa. This this little girl, she sang the Adele song, Hello, number one. The second song she sang was Whitney Houston, Mm -hmm. Houston song, I Will Always Love You. Hey, Tim or Sean. She sang Whitney Houston, I Will Love You. And the third song was uh, a Mary J. Blige song. What was it? I'm going to no. I'm going down. Yeah. And like like she sang it, I had goosebumps up my back. I was like, listen, when you go on a cruise, you're going to win your family a, a free cruise, okay? All right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So for you guys who are just joining us, I am Mia Rodrick. I'm the mom strategist, and I am here today with the daughter strategist. This is my daughter here, Hi. Alexandra. And what we're talking about is really just like life, having real talk, mother and daughter, right? Real talk. Right, real talk. Mm-hmm. And about how... You know, how we're making this motherhood thing work. Hey, Jason. Hey, hey, hey. We thought about that idea. The key yeah. strategy. <laughs> That's what you said, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of years back, we were like, okay. Yes. She's going to be the team strategist. She is. <laughs> she's pretty awesome. She's a straight A student. She's a field hockey goalie. Third baseman. Uh, she acts, she sings, she's a percussionist. And the question is sometimes when we see moms that are rocking it out for themselves, we think that our kids aren't rocking it out, that it's either or. And I wanted to show that it was like, and, right? And this is, she is well-rounded. I do everything. She, everything. In the world. Right. But Alex, like, what what advice do you have for any any parents out there who are like, they want to give it their dream, right? They want to go for it, but they haven't decided to because they think they have to hold back because of their kids. That's not true. Your kids want to see you ex- succeed just as much as you do. We, we thrive off of seeing our parents do what they love because that teaches us that we should do what we love. And if you're doing something that you... If you're not doing something that you love, your kid's going to see that and think that's okay. It's, that's it's, not okay. If my mom worked a nine-to-five job that she did not like, that's what probably what I'd be doing. I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. But because I see that you can have a job and you can do what you love and you can rock all your goals and you can rock your life, that's what I do. There we go. So, I mean, I don't even know what I can say to that. That's like boom, like boom shakalaka. Isn't that what you say, Jason? <laughs> boom, boom Jason says boom shakalaka. And uh, I think that that is a boom shakalaka because I think a lot of times in parenting and motherhood, we never think about that. Uh, yeah, boom, right? That our kids. To break it down, the teen, the teen strategist is breaking it down. Powerful moms raise powerful children, and that's awesome. And I think as moms, we've got to understand that 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 first check you write for yourself. You're really writing for your family. If you want to add value to your kids, you got to add value to yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Okay? You got to invest in yourself. <laughs> boom, shaka laka, boom. Okay? <laughs> So, see, Alex, my friends are just as crazy as as me. Now, I'm thinking that you guys might have some questions for, maybe you have questions for Alex um, today, or maybe you have questions for me about how we kind of do mom and motherhood, right? So, um, did I say mom and motherhood? I mean, like, what what is that? How Um, we do teenhood teenhood and motherhood. How we do teen and motherhood. So, do you have any questions for Alex specifically about, you know, about, how she feels in any way in terms of being a teenager and rocking out and, you know, owning her gifts and talents, right? And um, 
any questions for me? Because a lot of you guys might have teen, teens out here uh, that you have questions about. Or maybe your teens are watching and they have questions for Alex. Do you have any questions for us? The floor is open. The floor is open. For those of you who are watching via the web, I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist, strategist and this is... Alex, the teen strategist. <laughs> Okay, and what we do is we support families with life and business success. Now, you can always check me out at MiaRedrick.com. MiaRedrick.com. I've coached over 400 clients, 112 are authors, and half are number one Amazon bestsellers. And what we care about is, yeah, we got to own it, right, Alex? Yeah. Every day, all day, right? So, the Redrick women are taking the world by storm. <laughs> When it comes to starting your own business, what have you gleaned from your mom? When it comes to owning your own business, what have you learned from me? Um, everything. I've learned that it's so easy to balance what you do when you love everything you're doing, so there's no point in doing anything you don't like to do. I've convinced myself that I love everything, so now I do. Mm -hmm. And so it just helps because nothing's a task ever during my homework. Not a task. Doing sports, not a task. Um, singing, definitely not a task. Do that all the time for free. Um, but I've just learned, that, especially from her, because she's not doing what you would think. You don't have... I'm trying to... Words. Um, so I've just learned that you should love everything you do, because that's what she does. She loves everything she does, and so do I. That's right. So I work with people that I love. I talk about what I love to do. There's no sense in building a business that you don't love. Is she <laughs> going to sing one day for us? Oh, that's pressure. Wait now. We have to stop singing for free. Ooh. Yay. What do you think about that, Alex? I don't know. <laughs> I do it too much. It's just my gift to the world. It's her gift to the world, Anitra. You got to understand that when I put the girls in the car, one of the things that happens is that there's a free concert that Inevitable. goes on. Inevitably, in the back seat of the car, the girls are going to sing. It's just, it's just kind of what they do. It's like public service for the world, right? Is that right, Alex? Indeed. All my friends sing. Almost all my friends sing. Just all my friends do something. They either draw, they either sing, act. That's play an right. instrument, something. Are there any other qu questions for Alice? Because I thought it was kind of cool that you guys have an opportunity to meet my daughter. Because so many, you know, a lot of times you meet people and they say, hey, look, I'm a mom strategist. This is what I'm doing. But you never have a chance to pull back the layers and actually meet, you know, the people that make it happen and to meet my family. I thought it was kind of cool to have the opportunity to bring Alex on. I'm going to bring Patrick on also so you guys have a chance to meet him. How has your achievements helped or hindered your relationship? I think that's for you. Oh, no, I think it's for you. How has your achievements helped or hindered your relationship? Like in middle school, you know, do you find that because you're a rock star, has it helped or hindered your relationships? It's just, it just is. I mean... How do you choose your friends? Oh, well, that's easy. I only associate myself with specific certain people. I don't do drama at all. Like, in middle school, high school, you'll see a lot of drama. I just don't do it. I just don't see the purpose. There's no point. So, I don't. And so, when I'm choosing my friends, I choose people who I feel I can trust. I choose people who are going to be honest with me, no matter what it is. I don't care. Whatever happened, please tell me the truth. And it's just, yeah. Oh, I choose people who are confident in themselves because... I don't want to hang around with a lot of insecure people because that makes you insecure. Did you guys hear this on the scope last night? Okay. All right. Um, so I have a lot of friends who, and I, I don't have issues supporting people who don't have great self con confidence. That's fine. It's just, I don't want all my friends to be people who are always yes. bagging on themselves. And, um, so when I make friends, I make friends with people who have confidence in themselves so that if any day I'm feeling low, they have the ability to help me because you can't help anybody else before you help yourself. Yes, that's true. That was good. Yeah. I might give her more money for her allowance. Mm -hmm. That was a that was a <laughs> that was a good answer. What you think about that, Alex? Are there any other questions for Alexandra? It's not attractive to behave that way. It's not cool. Like, who wants to be around somebody like that, right? Like, let it go, like, immediately, right? Okay. 
Um, and so we didn't talk very much. Yes, a little <laughs> extra dough for this. <laughs> That's funny, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, T Man, there is no tip jar. No tip jar. You know, look, Alex, you know what we're going to say. It's a shame, right? So, are there any other questions for Alexandra? Wouldn't you admit that she, she's lovely and she's amazing? Are there teen strategist books in your near future? Probably not. <laughs> Um, but I wouldn't have an issue with writing one. I actually tried a few years back. Do you remember that? Yes, I did. We tried to write a book. Why don't you go get your um, essay and read the first paragraph? Now. Okay. Yeah, I okay. can. All right. You guys have got to hear this. Wait a minute. Okay. Like, seriously, I want feedback. Alex is going to go grab. Alex is applying for an academic scholarship to a new school for ninth grade. And I want you to just hear the first paragraph of what she wrote the other day. I love it. So, guys, don't don't leave because I think it's so important that we have, you know, real examples, real real teens that we are able to support and encourage them. And you guys can give her feedback. She, she came to me with the first paragraph. I have not written it at all and um, or had anything to do with it and it was pretty cool she's applying to a all girls school sticking right here okay thank you Jason um, she's applying to an all girls school which I love um, which is a is an incredible school for uh, the scholarship is for I think it's one hundred twenty one thousand dollars over four years um, and um, so she's applying for the full okay let's go Oh, All right, just pulling she's it up. pulling it up. She's <laughs> pulling it up. Okay, are we ready? You're gonna have to read and you're gonna have to project. All right. All right. All right. This is Alex's first paragraph of the essay. All I right. It's a rough draft, right? Two. I just need. One. Oh, two paragraphs. Do you want me to read this? Or whatever you want. I don't know. Just go ahead. Okay. I'll just read the first one. Are you guys ready? My title of my essay is "Embrace Yourself and All You Are." All right, it's a go. full scholarship. Yeah. You throw like a girl. Kick no. like a girl. Wait, wait. Uh, louder, louder, louder. Okay. okay, you. All right, you throw like a girl, kick like a girl, think like a girl, play like a girl. We live in a culture where a societal norm is to criticize women for merely being women, for simply being born without the advantage um, of having manly qualities. So we quite frequently hear not only men, but also women chastise females for being a lady. Why do we never hear anyone say, you throw like a boy? Because there's no insult in that, right? It's an issue that this generation struggles with. Girls and women think they're, they are confined to be what people tell them they are, but they are not. I know this because I do throw like a girl. That's why I'm a third baseman on my softball team. I know this because I do kick like a girl. That's why I'm a spectacular goalie on my field hockey team. I do think like a girl. That's why I have 90s and above in all my classes. I play like a girl for everything I believe in, and I win every time. What do you guys <laughs> think? That's the, that's the, that's the, that, see, we got boom, you go girl, boom, boom, right? Isn't it cool to have kids own what they do, and it feels really great, right, to yeah. do that? Well, you guys, she's off to a great start. So you got clap, 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 clap. <laughs> that goes to a song, right, isn't it? Does clap, it? clap, 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 clap. I don't know. All right, I'm not hip. Okay, <laughs> I think I'm hip though. Okay, you're hip. No. Oh, I'm hip, right? Okay, so isn't that a cool opening to her paragraph? Um, so you guys, it's, it's I'm so proud of her. She came to me the other day with, I hope that she's going to turn that into a book. Yes, that is an intro that instantly draws them in. See, there you go. You're getting feedback right away. Awesome. Right away. Yes, intro. See, there you go, Alex. So what is so cool about our Periscope family is that we're able to share in real time, in real time, you know, what's going on. And I appreciate you guys and your support. Do you have any other questions for Alex or myself? Yes, this is going to be amazing. Keep us posted. Wow. Yes, yes. Yeah. We're excited about it. She was just invited a week and a half ago to apply for the scholarship. Yes. A beautiful ask your question again. Uh, I didn't see your question. What is your question for um, for Alex or myself, all right? So the purpose today is just for me to introduce you to my daughter. I'm going to bring my son on shortly, Patrick, my oldest son. And, um, you know, had the same conversation with him about, you know, did he feel in any way because his mom is rocking her dreams that that he was neglected in some way. And I think what we see as moms is that that's not the case, that I grew up in a house full of strong women. Such an awesome passage. It is, isn't it? 
it's great, right? It's great to be in a household where you are loved and you're taught to love yourself. And um, that's a gift to give our kids a view of that. Um, kids need to hear this, right? Kids do need to hear this. And kids need to know that it's okay to own and be yourself, right? Because today in society, it's so normal for people not to be good enough because they don't have the right shoes, they don't have the right clothes, they don't have a, the perfect cell phone. It's just... Who it's needs a cell true. phone anyway? I need a cell phone. No, you have a cell phone. Okay. No, she doesn't have a smartphone, but you have a cell phone, right? You have a cell phone. It's not smart, but it's cell phone. <laughs> you can call people, right? You can text people. You just got to type a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking Nike and Un Always and their Like a Girl campaign. Do you find any of your friends need encouragement who have less support at home? If so, how? Um, yeah, I definitely have friends who need that little extra push from time to time. And when it comes to that, I just remind them, I make them remind themselves of all their good qualities. I make them remind themselves that they're smart. I make them remind themselves that they're beautiful. I don't tell them anything. I make them say it for themselves. Because if you don't say it, you don't believe it. Did you? Did you hear that? Okay. Did you... <laughs> All right, did you hear that? That's good stuff, Alex, up top. I learned from the best. Uh, hey, hey, that's great, right? So at the end of the day, it's not what someone says to you. It's your self-talk to yourself that makes all the difference, right? If you can say it, you believe it. Mia, please convince her to turn this into a book. I can see <laughs> that that uh, it's going to be uh, too many schools of required reading. Yeah, you know what? There should be more hearts for that. There should be more hearts for that. But, you know, I understand that you mesmerize. I, like, live with this all day long. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, it's hard to tap the screen and, yeah. and uh, you know... But, you know, what's so cool, got to look her, go to her, locate uh, businesses, right? So what I have to say is so cool is Alex interviewed recently at a school. And you know it's good when the director calls you of admissions and says, oh, my God, she's, like, absolutely <laughs> incredible and amazing. I have never, ever met with her. And the woman that drove her actually said to me that day, she said, you know what, your daughter is incredible. She's like, I think I'm going to join Toastmasters uh, as a result of riding in the car with her, right? So I love that she's a confident girl. She can she can own her confidence and she doesn't have to apologize about who she is. And do you feel in any way, Alex, that sharing who you are makes you arrogant or makes you feel like, like you know... Does... I think it's... No, it's not arrogance. If you know who you are, you're not saying like, oh, I'm perfect because that's arrogance because nobody's perfect. That's a fact. But if you're telling people, yeah, I'm smart. Yeah, I'm pretty athletic. Yeah. I'm good at saying I'm good at acting. That's not arrogance. You're just listing facts. <laughs> so they're facts. Nobody can argue with facts. It's not arrogance. It's facts. I think Beyonce said at the end of her press con conference at one time, she said, any questions? After she sang that Star Spangled Banner, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> so she was like, any questions? Okay. <laughs> Anybody doubt I can sing now? After I just saying this, any questions? All right, all right. Are there any more questions for Alex? I'm gonna, I'm gonna thank Alex for joining, mm -hmm. joining me today. My Did pleasure. You? Okay. You guys are awesome. <laughs> And um and so I want to thank you guys for listening. I'm going to bring my son on. Hey, Valencia. We had a chance to meet my daughter, Alexandra. She's the awesome um, woman that jump rope yesterday for like an hour and 10 minutes oh, wow. to like songs that would give you a heart attack <laughs> if you did just one song and jumped. Um, so I want to bring my son on. I just need a minute to get him, grab him, and you guys will have a chance to meet my oldest son as well. I hope you'll join me in the next couple of minutes. Let me grab Patrick, and I'll bring him on, okay? Hearts, hearts, hearts. Okay, all right. I love you guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Say bye. Bye. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.